Have you ever wanted to create a character that looks like and belongs in a AAA video game? Well now you can with this new MetaHuman release. I'm very excited to showcase the latest features that make it easier and faster than ever to create stunning photorealistic characters and export them back to Blender for use in your projects. Get ready to supercharge your Blender workflow and take your creations to the next level with MetaHuman. Now let us get started with MetaHuman. And I'm going to choose a character that I made in Blender using photogrammetry. And if you want to know how I made this character and exported it into MetaHuman, uh, I actually left uh, a link to a tutorial that I quickly made in the description below. You can watch that if you want. So I'm going to select my new MetaHuman identity and edit it. Let me show you the interface really quickly. Up here in this utility belt, you have the studio which allows you to select the environment this here allows you to select which angle you want from the camera the medium which allows you to select uh, what quality you want of the rend rendering and i'm going to select the high rate raised quality this is the level of detail of which there are eight it's very good for you to experiment with those so you can see how your character looks in each level of detail, but I'm going to leave it as it is. In here, I'm going to toggle on my clay material, so I'm not distracted by my skin material. And I'm going to hide the hair, but I actually don't have any hair. Over here, you can use coupling tools to edit the mesh that you already have. We're going to discuss this later. But for now, I'm going to pause the animation that I have. And we'll talk about the animation built later. And right now, let's see what I can do with my mesh. I'm going to enable the editing. The character that I took the reference from is actually Caucasian, so I'm going to make him just a bit pale. This is enough, he looks creepy without the hair. Now I'm gonna go back into the sculpting mode. The blending mode is actually where you take a couple of already set characters to extrapolate a character from them, but I'm not gonna go with that. I'm going to sculpt the character that I made using photogrammetry. And there are the hotkey references on the right side of the screen right here. I hope you can see them. And I intentionally made this character asymmetrical to see how MetaHuman is going to handle it. And I must say it handled it, it handled it well. But let me correct the ears looks a bit goofy and I want a more pronounced jaw and using the sculpting tools is very simple you basically just press the dots that they give you and move them around and you get the result that you want so this is like character creation menu in a game but on steroids And symmetry is on, I want to turn it off to adjust the eyelid on this eye. I turned it on by pressing this button here. And I was already satisfied with the result that I got by using the MetaHuman plugin, which I'm also going to leave it as uh, a link in the description of, so you can use it. But I just wanted to make some extra additions really quickly. Something that I always do whenever I'm modifying a character is that I go around to make sure everything's how I want it. I guess everyone looks creepy without hair. I won't take long modifying it because I want to showcase the other features that I have and uh, with this new release everyone each like gets one hour to test out the new MetaHuman creator so I don't want to lose my one hour modifying my character I can keep going at this for hours this one's like a quicker way to change your facial features drastically but I'm not going to do that and by the way you can also 
import your stylized characters into this and change them up. I have not tried it before. I wanted to try the real characters because I only had one out with the software. But I actually have uh, a stylized character creation course in Blender if that's what you're interested in. I'm gonna leave a link of that as well in the description. The description is gonna be full of links by now. So if you're interested, give it a look. Anyway, here is where I assign the skin. You can also, by using the roughness, determine how oily your character skin is. You can also mess with the contrast. That could change up uh, the ambient occlusion and the shading. And how intense the texture is defines how old your character is and how much... Wait, let me see. Yeah, it defines how old your character is and the amount of imperfections in his skin. You can also choose uh, the amount of prickles that you have, its density, the strength, etc. But I'm not going to do that. And the accenting. You can control the redness in your skin, like the flushing. Here I'm controlling the redness of the cheeks. You can do that to the forehead as well. But the forehead is usually not that red. It's usually lighter than the rest of the body. Let's see what I can do with the chin. Give it a bit more saturation. And here I can modify the eyes. You have some preset selections that you could choose. But I want to go into more detail. I'm going to go to the iris part of the eye and choose the base color. The detail color is the color that's inside. I want to give him dark brown co eye color. I want to lower down the iris size. I'll go with this one. In here, I'm modifying both eyes, not just one of them. If you want to modify just one eye, like the left or the right, here's the option. And in the sclera, I want to give it some redness and more vascularity. Let me put him on. <laughs> this, uh, this helps you see the inside of his mouth. I had his jaw open. So I can see what I'm modifying. This part is really interesting. Not many people give any attention to the inside of the character's mouth. But with this software, you can practically take uh, a shortcut with the entire thing. They have it readily set here for you. Anyway. This can shift. I'd like some asymmetry in my character. So I'm going to shift the under teeth. Um, if you want an older character, you can actually use this to determine how worn down his teeth look. Since I'm going with a Caucasian, perhaps English looking character, I'm going to give him realistic English teeth. This is outstanding, actually. I kind of regret that I didn't choose my... Uh, stylized character for this tutorial, but um, or showcase to be more exact. But when this is more available for longer than one hour, this is the first thing I'm gonna do. Okay, going back to makeup. I'm not gonna apply any makeup. It's a male character. When you see these uh, exclamation points next to next to them, means it usually means that uh, this will only be exported as particle hair in Blender, not as uh, hair cards. And I always have uh, character design and uh, integration into gaming in mind whenever I use any other software. So I usually prefer to go with hair cards instead of uh, particles. So I'm gonna select a hair that has hair card uh, support. Let me see what could look short and clean. Now let me 
model his stubble. Again, I'm not going to use anything with an exclamation mark next to it. This should be shorter. Again, not going to choose anything experimental. This looks much better. So we're done with the beard. As for the body proportions, Wait, let me make it more YouTube friendly and give him something. Let's make him decent. And the head scale needs to be a bit smaller. And this is okay considering that I'm going to export this back into Blender and change it up uh, however I want using the sculpting methods and the poly editing methods. Honestly, what I want from here are the details that I'm too lazy to make, such as the inside of the mouth and uh, the eye details, uh, the hair cards, and uh, even the albedo map that's going to ex be exported with this file if you download it. Now let me choose some shoes for him. And there is no option to export as an FBX in uh, MetaHuman. So I'm gonna have to use Quixel Bridge and download the character that I made to my Unreal Engine first, then export it from Unreal Engine to Blender. This could take a while because I'm choosing uh, the highest level of detail. In real quick, I went back and tried and this is how my stylized character looks like after editing it, uh, just the way I edited uh, the photogrammetry uh, character before. And I have to say, I didn't have many options as to how I could edit my character and make it look more stylized here. Like, it's possible for you to import your stylized character, but uh, don't expect anything much from uh, uh, MetaHuman in terms of stylized characters. I think this is the most I can do for now because I experienced uh, with many options here. So it's safe to assume that uh, MetaHuman is perfect for realistic characters, but not so much so with stylized characters. And this is how my character looks like in Unreal. Now it's time to import it to Blender. Uh, as expected, the hair cards are not working well because it's still in experimental phases. But nevertheless, I just wanted to show you the workflow of how you can take a photogrammic picture uh, from uh, Unreal to... sorry, from MakeHuman to Unreal to... back to... Blender. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this. I'm gonna have to export it as an FBX. And I had to go to Unreal because I couldn't do that in uh, uh, MetaHuman. MetaHuman does not support FBX. Okay, now select your character. Go to File. Export selected. Now back in Blender, I'm going to import the file that I exported. And it's going to take a while, honestly, because of uh, the details that the character has. Here I am back in Blender with the character that I made in uh, MetaHuman, but uh, I've not applied all of the materials yet because I still didn't find any plugins that would allow me to directly apply them from one place to another and it would take ages for me to do so. But this can give you an idea of the quality of characters that you can get in Blender. Uh, this is how it looks like in Eevee, and I wonder how it would look like in Cycles. Let's just try it. Not half bad. The albedo map is fantastic. And this is just the albedo map without the depth or uh, the roughness in, uh, information. Of course, when I add the rest of that along with the normals, this would look even better. And I would suggest uh, experimenting with other softwares than Blender if you want to get uh, a good uh, final result. Something like Marmoset Toolback, perhaps. I'm not sure if it's uh, compatible with it, but this is the workflow for you to get your characters into Blender. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and let me know what else you would like to see, what other softwares you would like me to review or uh, to make showcase or tutorials of. Uh, see you in the next one.